first, it's time for a little holy mackerel stories in today's news. His very first day in office after being elected senator, Virginia Democrat Jim Webb introduced the post-9-11 Veterans Educational Assistance Act, better known as the new GI Bill. One of his original co-sponsors was then-Senator Barack Obama of Illinois. Well, the two men were together again today at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia, to celebrate the fact that the first checks have now been mailed out to veterans under the new GI Bill. This is the first major update to the promises that we make to veterans in this country since World War II. We do this not just to meet our moral obligation to those who sacrificed greatly on our behalf and on behalf of the country. We do it because these men and women must now be prepared to lead our nation in the peaceful pursuit of economic leadership in the 21st century. President Franklin Roosevelt signed the original GI Bill in 1944. Almost 8 million World War II vets used that educational benefit afforded them by the GI Bill to attend college. You think the middle class in the mid and late 20th century was neat? You think America did a pretty good job turning our massive wartime mobilization in the 1940s into a massive economic and scientific and educational juggernaut in the 50s and 60s? Well, you can say thanks to the GI Bill in large part for a lot of that. The new GI Bill offers new vets up to 100% of tuition and housing, as well as things like books and supplies. If there is a cloud in this silver lining, it's that the website created to guide veterans through the paperwork morass of this new benefit is not exactly user-friendly. To help, the nonpartisan nonprofit organization Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America has set up their own website to try to help veterans navigate their new bennies. You can check it out at newgibuild.org. We've posted a link to it at rachel.msnbc.com. Also, as the Republican Party searches for meaning in the political minority, a characteristic affliction of some of its most senior members appears to be the inability to connect big, obvious political dots. Case in point, Senator John McCain. Senator McCain, how important is it for the Republican Party to try to appeal to Latinos? On the issue of the Hispanic voter, we have to do a lot more. And I am, I am of the belief that unless we reverse the trend of Hispanic voter registration, we have a very, very deep hole that we've got to come out of. Okay, that's political dot number one. The GOP not appealing to Latinos puts the GOP in a deep, deep hole. So says John McCain. Ready for political dot number two? I'm unable to support Judge Sotomayor's nomination. Okay, just to recap here, dot number one. John McCain says the GOP is desperately searching for ways to increase their appeal to Latino voters. Dot number two. Republican politicians must decide how to vote on the first Latino Supreme Court justice nominee. And John McCain has decided to vote against. He's decided to make the first Latino nominee ever, the first ever Supreme Court nominee he has ever voted against. He's never voted against a nominee for the Supreme Court before. Sonia Sotomayor will be his first no vote. Is there any way that these dots can be connected? Can anyone help Senator McCain with the whole shortest distance between two points is a straight line idea?